The day has come where they finally listen to what a lot of people have been asking for for a very long time, and that is a mega menu. Now, there's a lot of other features that have been released in this beta version of Elementor Pro, but we're going to focus primarily on the mega menu, and we will take a look at some of the other things after we've seen this. So first of all, link to the release notes to everything that's included in this beta release are in the description below, so you can check it out if you want to. So let me demonstrate a very quick example of how the mega menu actually looks on the front end of the site. So this is a test page that I put together very quickly. And if we take a look at the services section, if we click over that, you can see we now get a drop down mega menu with image over the left hand side. And we've got multiple different menus on the main section on the right hand side. Now, this is a very simple design, but you can get incredibly creative using pretty much all the tools you have inside Elementor Pro. So now we've seen what we can create. Let's take a quick look at how it all works. Now, the first thing you need to do, as with pretty much all experimental features in Elementor, is to go ahead and enable it. To do that, all you need to do is come over to Elemental and Settings. Inside there, hop over to the Features, and now you can see all the various different features you need to enable. Some of these will be default enabled, other ones are not enabled. You can go through and set what you want. So you can see if we come down to the menu, I've set mine as active. You do need to make sure you've got the nested elements active as well. This allows you to nest different items inside the menu structure itself. With that being said, that's all you need to do. Now, what I've done is I've created a template for the header. So let's come over into the theme builder section. There's my header template. Let's go ahead and edit this. And you can see this looks pretty much the same as any other kind of menu structure that you'd have when you create a header inside Elemental. However, there is one notable difference right now. We have, if we come over to the right hand side we've got this menu and inside there you can see i currently have four items now this is slightly different to the menu that you're used to you can see we've got the wordpress menu which is probably what you've been using up until now however this new menu function is where we get access to working with these mega menus so you're going to need to make sure you insert one of these i've already done that inside here and when you do you get this menu structure and over the left hand side we get this layout option that allows us to set the sort of parent navigation elements at the top so in this example services about us and so on now, when you open any of these up, they look pretty standard. However, there's one important feature if you want to have a mega menu for that section. You need to enable the drop down content. You can see I've enabled that. And now, if I come over the services and click, that will open up my drop down menu so I can start creating and editing the content of it. And if we open this things up on the right hand side, you'll see I've got a container set inside here. And inside the container, I've got a couple of different widgets. We've got a couple of WordPress menus, the standard kind of menus, and we've also got an image. So this is how everything is set up. And then I'm simply using the Flexbox options for the container itself. And you can see I've set the justification, the direction, and we can change these over. You can see I can use the reverse, I can use the standard, whatever I want. And I can set the size, I can set the, the features, the styling for all the different elements. So there's nothing inside you that's particularly complicated. So let's go ahead and see how we can create something very similar in a different menu section. So let's go ahead, let's go to menu two. Let's come over to our layout. Let's go into our about us and let's go and enable that to be a drop down content. We select it. It gives us the little drop down arrow. And now if I click on that, you can see I get the standard kind of drag your widgets here section. So I don't need to use containers. I can use whatever I want, but it does make sense to use the container to be able to style and structure everything in a logical fashion. So now what I can do is I can drag the elements that I want in. So let's come back over. Now you'll notice that this looks a little different inside the editor. We'll come on to that a little later. We're going to come over to the plus to add an element and inside there, let's go and grab ourselves the container. So you can drag and drop that into our design and you see that now places the container inside item two. Now I can expand the container out, which is currently empty, but I can go ahead and start adding extra content. So if I click on the plus, you see that'll take us back over to the elements on the left hand side and now I can grab whatever I want. So for this example, let's go and grab an image and let's kind of recreate something similar to the demo. Let's insert our image, so we'll drag that into our design, we'll choose an image as we normally would. This will do, we'll click on select, and there now is our first sort of widget inside the container. Now what we can do is we can go back to the plus again, and let's go and add in something like a WordPress menu. So we'll click and drag that in, and you can see that now positions that at the top in this example, so we can select it, choose the menu I want. For this example, I use the services menu. There's all my menu items, I can now easy hop over to the style section. We'll come in and change text color. We can use our global options. So we'll set that to primary. 
Come to our typography, we'll choose our global options in there and we'll choose, let's go for something like accent in this example. There we go. And obviously we don't want this to be stacked side by side. Just go to the layout and in there I can say I want this to be vertical and there we go. We now have our vertical navigation. Now obviously things look a little bit rubbish at the moment because we haven't set up how we want things to interact, whether it's a row or column, all those flex settings. Let's come back to our container. Make sure we have the layout option selected. We can set this to be a row. And now we can use the justify options to space these out the way that we want. So we can say space between, for example, or we can say space evenly, space around. We can flip these the opposite way. So let's set this to be space between. And you'll see now we've basically created our navigation. If we want to add another navigation element like this menu, let's just go ahead, select it, right click, and just say duplicate and we now have two side by side. As simple as that, and then we can go to the container and we can start to style this and structure it and do whatever we want with it to kind of lay this out the way we want. So for example, we may not want to have the spacing around the edges, well, you can come into advanced and you can set your padding to be zero, for example, and that gets rid of any spacing. It's all very simple and straightforward if you've used any kind of flex setup when you're using Elementor anyway. And then once we finish with this, we can go ahead and click on the publish button. We'll hop over into our test page and refresh. There's our About Us, we can click go over that and you see there's our mega menu. So what we need to do now is finalize the styling and the position and all those kinds of things. And we'll very much end up with something that looks like we've seen in the original demo. It's incredibly simple. It is a little bit flaky sometimes. It's not always the easiest to kind of get everything where you want it, but generally it works very, very well. So it won't take anyone too long to be able to start to harness this and use it inside their designs. And that's basically how the mega menu side of things works. Now, before we close things down and take a look at some of the other main features, let's just take a look at this new updated interface. We'll see that there's quite a few changes here and it brings it into a more modern and streamlined kind of interface working with Elementor. That is very nice to see. You'll see we've got the Elementor button at the top, which gives us some options for the theme builder, history and so on. So we can jump into various parts or we can manage our website. We can click on the plus, which will take us over to all the elements. So we can easily go ahead and add our elements in. And you'll also notice things are laid out with a little bit more breathing space now. Everything just looks a little bit smoother, a little bit more pro. So that looks pretty cool. I like what they've done there. If we come into the site settings, this will take us over into our global styling. We can set up all our global options. And as always, we can click on the X to come back out of that. And then we've got our structure panel, which is over on the right hand side. So we can open or close that down. And basically what they've done is they've streamlined, taken a lot of the options from the bottom of the screen and now put those at the top, space things out a little better. If we take a look in the middle, you can see this tells us what page we're currently editing or what template, whatever you're working on. You've got your responsive mode options, which you can easily click between. So that's pretty nice to see. And you can click on the header settings in this example, and you see this thing takes us over to the settings option. If we look on the right hand side, we've got the option for the finder, we've got the option for our help, and we've also got the preview option. And finally, when you make changes, your big old publish button in the top right hand corner. So everything looks a lot smoother. There is one thing that I don't really like about this though. How do you actually get out of Elementor? Sure, you can come to the Elementor button and you can say manage website, and that will then open another tab up and take you back. But that kind of seems a little counterintuitive. So I might be missing something here. There might be a setting hidden somewhere, or I might just be being blind. But to me, I just want the button that just says, take me out of Elemental, close it down, simple as that. So if anybody sees that and they know where it is, please do let me know in the comment section because it might just be me missing exactly where to do that. So next up, let's take a look at the changes that have been made to the loop builder. Now, this is a, still an experimental feature, so use this with caution. But we've seen this in the past. I've put a link to the videos in the description below so you can check that out. But let's just jump over into Elementor itself. Let's go ahead and create a loop item. So we're going to create a template. So we'll add a new template. And you'll notice now that we actually have some starting pre-designed templates that we can use to get the ball rolling. Now, admittedly, they're not particularly interesting. They're not that nicely designed. So there's still a lot of scope there to be making these a lot better. So you might want to work on creating your own loop designs, but let's use one anyway. Let's start off with this first one. We'll click insert to add this and we'll say, yep, please apply it. So there's our design, our first design. Now, obviously we can still come in and we can change anything inside here. So we can come into our style, for example, we can change this so we can adjust our typography. Let's set this to be something like our secondary. Let's come into our options. Let's adjust things like the letter spacing. Let's tighten that up a little bit. 
There we go. So we can make changes to this in any way that we want. Let's go ahead and publish this. So there's our first loop template. Let's go ahead and create a second one. So again, going into the template section, we're going to come to our loop items. We're going to add another one. Let's choose a completely different design this time. Let's grab one of these. Let's see what these look like. So there's our separate different design. Let's go ahead and publish this. And let's hop back into our templates. Let's quickly rename these. So we've got our main loop design and our alternative loop design. We've now finished inside the theme editor. Let's come back over. Let's go ahead and edit the loop page that I've just set up. This is a blank page, but I just set it up and named it. And let's go ahead and add the loop in. So let's just search for loop. And there's our loop grid. We'll drop that into our page. And you see now we can create the template or we can select the template. So this is going to be our main template. We'll select that from there. We'll just type in main. There's our main loop design. And you can see now that's pulled in the design elements for us. So everything looks the way you kind of probably got used to by now. However, what we can also do is we can use an alternative template. So we can enable this and you can see we can choose our alt template. So let's click on there. We'll come over and we'll say alt. There's our alternative template design. And now we can say where we want that. So let's just say two. And now you can see we now get a different variation inside there in our second of our loop grid. You can apply once. You can set the column span so you can make this bigger if you wanted to. So you can see we can create these alternative designs and you can add more items. You can edit the template inside here. It is very, very easy to work with. Again, if you've come from something like using Crocoblock and Jet Engine and those types of tools, you've been able to do this kind of thing for a while where you can inject different designs into your loop. So it's good to see that this has been brought into Elementor Pro and it is incredibly easy to set up. So you could use this for adverts, for various different things, whatever you kind of wanted. So you can see it is Pretty simple and straightforward. And then you've got the same options for things like your equal height. You can set things to be masonry, all those kinds of things. And that's basically all there is to it. That's the two different ways we can set up alternative different designs. And also we can use the templates that are shipping with Elemental to get started with our loop designs. Now, there's still several smaller tweaks and updates and things like that, but I'll let you take a look at the article that's linked in the description below because I don't really think they need to be included in this video. However, what are your thoughts on what I've shown you today? Is the Mega Menu something you've been waiting for for a long time? What about these alternative designs in the Loop Builder? Or what do you think of this new revamp to the interface of Elemental? Let me have all your thoughts in the comment section down below. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care. Thank you.